Recently, I had the pleasure of watching a movie called Kubo and the Two Strings. Well, the movie itself wasn't exactly groundbreaking, I was absolutely blown away by the quality of the animation I was seeing. Kubo and the Two Strings has what I consider to be the best stop motion animation ever created. But even when it's this good, stop motion animation often gets a lot of flack from the regular moviegoer. Stop motion animations routinely make less money in underperforming theatres, with people often citing this jittery quality is a reason that they don't like an entire medium, regardless of the vast swathes of content available within it. But for me, I genuinely love stop motion animation and a large part of that is the imperfect, almost sketch-like quality of it. As I'm sure you're already aware, but a quick recap if you're not, stop motion animation is a process of taking an inanimate object, often paper cutouts or 3D models, taking many pictures of that object, all with just a slight incremental movement, and the blending of those pictures results in a moving image, bringing life to the lifeless. As you can probably guess, that requires a hell of a lot of work. Even if you're only filming at 24 frames per second, that's 24 individual, unique positions and photographs that need to be taken for one second of footage. Even if your movie only lasts an hour and a half, that's an insane amount of work. Here's stop motion legend Ray Harryhausen, whose contribution to the medium would require a full video on his own, describing his work on the iconic Jason and the Argonauts skeleton animation. I had to take about four and a half months on that particular sequence which only lasted five minutes. It took four and a half months in the front of the animation camera to animate seven skeletons because at, at many times I would only average 13 frames a day. For me, watching a stop motion animation film with even a small appreciation or awareness of how much effort goes into every second of what you're watching adds to the experience. It's like watching a cardist pull off a particularly amazing flourish. Now the point of this is not to detract at all from hand drawn or computer animation, both of which also require a huge amount of work for a small amount of screen time. But the problem with computer animation now is that the technology has advanced so much that near photorealism is actually the norm, and anything less than that is off putting. Movies like The Life of Pi and the recent Jungle Book prove that the technology can flawlessly put anything the director can imagine on the screen. My worry is therefore that in a Hollywood where money and profit is increasingly the be all and end all, the stop motion animation will be fake out of mainstream movie production. If you look at the 50 top grossing animated movies, not one of them is a stop motion animation. In fact, if you look at the highest grossing stop motion movie, that's 2000's Chicken Run, it has only grossed around $225 million. Compare that with number 50 on the list of highest grossing animations, which is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, which is to date grossed nearly $420 million, and you have a film that's grossed only about half of that. Obviously, there's many other factors that need to be considered. Gross versus profit, years the movie's been available and inflation etc but the trend is there. And if you're thinking there's no way stop motion animation can be phased out, remember that hand drawn cell animation was the dominant untouchable form for decades and when was the last time you saw one of those in the cinema? I guess this is a bit of a ramble but I just wanted to say that I think, even subconsciously, the handcrafted nature of stop motion and the passion of the animators come through by watching a movie like Kubo and the Two Strings. In a world where classic movies are pointlessly reimagined in CG and even Pixar outputting multiple sequels, this kind of creativity and dedication needs to be commended and appreciated. Studios like Ardman and Laika need to be allowed to keep producing these kinds of truly amazing movies and to push the technology in stop motion as a medium as a whole. Movies like like Kubo and the Two Strings are exactly the kind of movies that are going to inspire a whole future generation of filmmakers. Look, basically, just go see Kubo and the Two Strings while you still can. It's so good. Hello and thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, then don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new here, then click the subscribe button to keep up with videos as I post more. If you are already subscribed to my channel though, you'll notice that all of my last few videos have been all audio only. Well, the reason for that, as you might be able to tell from the new background, is that I've actually moved flat quite recently and uh, I'm no longer on my own. I'm now sharing with people, so I'm not exactly 100% sure how we're gonna sort out things like you know, when I can film, when I can't film, um, because obviously I can get quite loud while I'm making my videos and I can scream and shout and that wasn't a problem while I was on my own, but now that I'm sharing and somebody's staying literally through that wall, it might be a bit of a problem if I come home at midnight from my work and then decide that I'm going to start screaming and shouting about some film that I've just seen. Not the best way to be as a roommate, so... 
As I said, the last few videos of mine have been all audio only, which I think is kind of working, but I don't really like doing that. I think it's just, it's not me. So I'm going to try and sort out a schedule in terms of filming and uploading, which means I might be ramping things back in terms of uploads and when I upload. But I know that's a problem for the YouTube algorithm and I'll get slaughtered for that and that YouTube doesn't like people who don't upload, you know, two times a week, if not one time a week. So I don't really, I mean, I don't mind taking that hit because I just do this for the fun, I don't get paid for it, I don't make AdSense off of it. I only have like 200 subscribers, so as much as I like making the content, I know I'm not really held to the same standards that other YouTubers are. But anyway, just a little bit of an update. I know this video was something a little bit different to what I usually put in my channel. So again, if you liked it, hit the thumbs up button, let me know, and maybe I'll focus on this kind of thing in the future. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.